to concentrate, try not to get up during this performance, and we are going to start off with the, this beautiful music. So. Please welcome Mr. Henderson and the concert band. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to, while I'm doing something, I'm, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just getting the technology set up. But I wanted to thank some people that have really been working hard this last week. And uh, this fine, beautiful new projector here has reminded me to, to thank these guys. Uh, Mickey Kuro and Luis Mango, as among other people, really get hit up during testing season, right? They're just running around crazy getting everybody's devices working and hooked up and getting the right browsers going. And uh, <clears throat> so thank you so much for this wonderful projector and all the stuff you guys do. Um, we're going to start out with a little bit of music technology to um, set the stage for the piece of music we're going to play. We're going to be playing a piece of music that will go down in history. Um, it's probably one of the most favorite things I've ever taught students, or favorite pieces of music I've ever been involved in in any way. Kind of like maybe your literature teacher's favorite book, or your science teacher's most awesome lab, lab unit that they really enjoy teaching. It's kind of going to be one of those. Um, it's based on three early American, or not American folk songs, what we'd say now are American, but certainly have come from a variety of parts of the world. Three folk tunes, as you know, folk music would be passed on not by being written down on a piece of paper, but taught vocally in the past two generations, taught vocally. Often, maybe accompanied by homemade instruments, or maybe instruments that pre-mass manufacturing, so like handmade instruments, homemade, things like that, sung on a front porch, living rooms, country stores, things like that. So there are three folk songs that this uh, tune is based on in three separate movements. And, um, I thought what I'd do to introduce the folk songs is actually have some uh, vocal versions of them so you could be reminded of what the original setting is like. So here we go. Whoop, that's not it. <laughs> set using only components of those melodies. 
melodies. So all the bass lines, all the reinforcement, all the accompaniments, all the counter melodies are, he takes little pieces of the other melodies to support whatever the meaning is at any given time. And at, at the very end, the culmination, the grand finale, the third movement, um, he does what's literally an acoustic mashup or a symphonic mashup. And you all know what like, digital, in digital music, electronic music, what mashups are. But um, it's really amazing. It's, and, that's, and this is just like maybe the most obvious compositional technique he uses. I wanted to talk about it and display a visualization of it so you can at least hear it. But if, I challenge you as listeners to listen hard because there's a lot more stuff like what I'm going to show you going on. Even from the first down, the first four notes of the song are the outline notes of the melody. That's the, all the melodies that are used. So it's, it's very well put together, a wonderful composition. It's been an honor to work on it. And I really appreciate my friends and musicians behind me for helping me. So here's a little visualization of what you're going to hear at the end. And we'll, we'll ask when we play that you can hold your applause through all the movements. There's a lot of nuances and even delicate passages. We'll just wait until the very end. This big thing here, you're going to hear the digitization of it. They're going to sound a whole lot better when they play it. The computer sound card sounds a little bit like a Nintendo 64 or something, but anyway, this will give you an idea of what to listen for. This is the first thing, poor wayfaring stranger, raining out of the sky in orange there. The whole first movement is based on that song, but it uses parts of the other songs to support it. Second song, Pretty Little Horses, the whole second movement. It's about three minutes out of this little song. Short little melody, it just notes it, twists it around, turns it upside down, all kinds of great things. And the third melody is the Scarborough Fair. This is kind of in a three, four, but one, two, three, four, two. I'll show you why that's important later. So we're feeling the music in units of three. He has some rhythmic components like this. Bass ostinato, a single note on a rhythm. It kind of becomes a little bit of a groove. Then he turns the bass line loose, and it becomes really quite groovy. Still in three. One, two, one. So these ornaments now are in two. One, two, one, two, while the bass line is still playing in three. Very complicated. It's called polymetric. at the same time, aren't they? All mashed up. Some of the ornaments, still the bass line. It's crazy, it puts that polymeter over the top. One, two, one, two, one. Again, it's going to sound a lot better when a real band plays it. But this would give you an idea of kind of what to listen for. I really challenge you to uh, try, to, try to hear some of the things you're seeing raining out of the uh, sky. Thank you for your attention and we hope you enjoy our program.
So last summer, Pastor Damien and I uh, went down to Ithaca, New York, uh, 